The Kremlin urgently needs results on the battlefield, which is why the command has stopped taking losses into account altogether. Even valuable military specialists are thrown into the so-called meat assaults. This was reported by Mikhail Polinkov, a Russian Z-blogger and associate of the Czechist Strelkov Gherkin. Polinkov was horrified by the processes that are taking place in the Russian army. According to him, Russian soldiers are being destroyed en masse, throwing meat at the front. I see the situation getting worse. Some units are transferring everyone to assault. They are disbanding reconnaissance, UAVs, and so on, and everyone to assault. According to the papers, one number of assault troops is submitted, but in fact, it turns out, there are none. And up there they demand a larger number of living bayonets. It doesn't matter if they are wounded or what, but they must be in assault, Polinkov said. He spoke quite boldly about the Putin regime, admitting that the authorities do not consider their own people to be human beings. We understand the attitude of the authorities towards all of us. Not even the authorities, but the system. I do not consider the Russian Federation a state. Any state is based on ideology. This is the foundation on which the state is built. We do not have it. It has been replaced by capitalism, banditry, a careless attitude towards the individual. Ideology has been replaced by the commercial interests of a narrow group of people who live off the super profits from the sale of our homeland's resources. I consider the Russian Federation a closed joint stock company, where Putin is the irreplaceable CEO, said the Z-blogger. Russia has almost exhausted its forces to continue the war against Ukraine. In the near future, the so-called SVO will be curtailed. That special strange military operation that began almost three years ago is coming to an end. The trend is already obvious. Everything is heading towards a denouement that Moscow did not think about in February 2022. The longer this war goes on, the worse the post-war conditions are for the Russian Federation. As concerns are growing over North Korean troops' involvement in Russia's war of invasion in Ukraine, a new study has revealed an alarming issue. According to sources familiar with the assessments from group of 20 countries, North Korea may eventually deploy 100,000 troops to support Kremlin in hostilities in Ukraine if relationship between Pyongyang and Moscow continues to strengthen. Being part of multiple evaluations concerning the growing alliance between Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, the new report emphasized that while this scenario is not expected to occur in the near future, the deployment of 100,000 troops would likely happen on rotation basis over time rather than in a single batch. A similar concern was voiced by Ukraine's ambassador to South Korea Dmitro Ponomarenko in early November. In an interview with the U.S. media, Ponomarenko said his country expected up to 15,000 North Korean troops deployed to fight in Russia's border Kursk region where Ukraine launched large-scale incursion in early August. South Korea's defense ministry and presidential office have refused to comment on these claims. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has repeatedly urged Western allies to respond to Pyongyang's troops' deployment in Russia, stressing that Pyongyang's involvement in the war would further exacerbate the conflict. The deepening cooperation between Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un will also be raised at the G20 summit in Brazil this week including by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz when he meets Chinese President Xi Jinping. U.S. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use long-range Atakms missiles on Russian territory for the first time. This decision comes two months before the end of his presidential term, according to the New York Times. According to officials, the weapon will likely be used initially to protect Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. The New York Times notes that Biden's decision represents a significant shift in U.S. policy. This choice divided his advisors and came just two months before the inauguration of the elected president, Donald Trump, who promised to limit further support for Ukraine. Officials stated that the authorization for Ukraine to use long-range missiles, 
known as Army Tactical Missile Systems, was given in response to Russia's unexpected decision to deploy North Korean troops in combat. While officials have said they do not expect a drastic change in the course of the war. One of the aims of the policy shift is to send a message to North Korea that their forces are vulnerable and that they should not send more troops. Officials noted that while Ukrainian forces are likely to first use the missiles against Russian and North Korean troops threatening Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region, Biden may allow them to use this weapon in other areas. Some U.S. officials have expressed concerns that Ukraine's use of missiles across the border could provoke Russian dictator Vladimir Putin to take retaliatory action using force against the U.S. and its coalition partners. However, other U.S. officials have dismissed these concerns as exaggerated. It is worth noting that this week, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibiha held a conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during which the issue of permission for long-range strikes was discussed. Following the meeting, Sibiha mentioned that there is cautious optimism regarding this decision. Recall, France and Britain have allowed Ukraine to strike deep within Russian territory using their scalp and storm shadow missiles. This decision was made following approval from the United States, informs Le Figaro. Following the approval from U.S. President Joe Biden's administration for long-range strikes on the Russian Federation, France and Britain have also authorized the use of their weapons by Ukraine. As a result, the Ukrainian armed forces can now carry out strikes deep within Russian territory using not only Atoms but also Scalp and Storm Shadow missiles. Thousands of North Korean troops being used to bolster Russian forces in Ukraine show Vladimir Putin's desperation to compensate for losses on the front line. Putin's forces are believed to be losing hundreds of troops a day, with Ukrainian estimates going as high as 1,200 to 1,500, so the more than 10,000 troops South Korea believes are in Russia would last two weeks or so at that rate. The troops are already under fire, being shelled in the Russian border region of Kursk, According to Kyiv, that is the area where Ukrainian troops have held territory, having started a daring raid in August. North Korean soldiers are now in place, mainly in locations around Russia's Kursk region where Ukrainian forces have captured some Russian territory and that the troops have already suffered combat casualties. North Korean mothers who sent their children to Russia must feel unimaginable pain, said Kim Jong-ah, a North Korean defector and former first lieutenant in the North Korean People's Army who spoke to VOA Korean. It drives you crazy. How else can you express that feeling? Said Kim, herself a mother who now runs a non-profit in Seoul that promotes women's rights in North Korea. They cannot even cry as hard as you want at home because there's no soundproof walls between houses. Kim, who escaped North Korea in 2009, said the families of those North Korean soldiers in Russia must be suffering without being able to express their grievances due to pressure from the North Korean regime. It is widely believed that the Kim Jong-un regime mobilized its elite Storm Corps special forces to support Russia. Lee hyun Sung, a former soldier in the Storm Corps unit and an SKP who now lives in the US, told VOA Korean, that the North Korean regime does not inform families of overseas deployments, unit locations or personal safety issues for fear of leaking military secrets. Lee suggested that news of the deployment is likely already spreading by word of mouth among residents and that there will certainly be internal opposition among residents to this clear violation of human rights, deploying the troops without notice to the families. Rumors will spread quickly and if the families who were not aware of the deployment find out their sons were sacrificed, this will be a huge blow to the regime. In a recent talk hosted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, Tae Yong-ho, former North Korean diplomat who served in South Korea's National Assembly after his defection, said although Pyongyang is keeping the deployment secret, North Korean troop fatalities will be hard to keep from public view. Tae also said that North Korea has a very low birth rate, with families having only one or two children, so parents will not be able to accept the fact that their children died defending Russia, not their own country.